Hi, I'm Greg Robinson and this is MyPhotographyShow.com. I'm here right now to critique this image that came in from Mike, who says that he bracketed five exposures of this scene at Mesa Arch in Canyon Islands, NP in Utah, and blended them together in Photoshop CS5. Uh, due to the fact that there were other photographers all around the rim of this canyon, my composition had to be what you see before you. I was happy with the starburst effect I was capable of capturing using F-22. Yeah, well, good going on that one, Mike. Uh, that is true. It's a shame for your composition, I agree with you. I'm gonna critique this image in... Um, Let's see, I'll talk about your settings, I'll talk about your composition, and I'll talk about your HDR, okay? So there's three different parts uh, that we'll have a look at together. Now, uh, first off, settings. As you can see, um, Mike used 200 ISO here, uh, which was good. Uh, on the other hand, you were using a 5D Mark III, so I would have suggested going up to 100. Why not? You know, you were on a tripod, given that you were at one fourth of a second. Um, and using HDR, it's always better on a tripod, isn't it? I would have suggested, yeah, 100 ISO just to get the best out of your camera, you know, why not? Um, aperture f-22, that is great. For those of you who do not know, when you're doing a landscape shot and you want everything in your image to be perfectly sharp, you need a huge depth of field. Now for that, the only aperture that will bring you the most depth of field possible is the closed one, the most closed aperture. Uh, so in your case it was f-22, great going on that. And in doing so, well, your aperture just proposed, your shutter speed, your camera even proposed to use one quarter of a second shutter speed. Given you were bracketing um, in five different exposures, I hope that that was what you were cho uh, changing, okay? When you're doing bracketed photos, if there is no motion involved, then change your shutter speed for your different um, exposures, okay? Um, so I suppose you had one shutter speed that was at 1 one twenty-fifth of a second, another one at 1 sixtieth, another one at 30th, and etc, etc going down. Um, I'm going as high as 1 one twentieth, even probably higher, 1 two hundred fiftieth, because you have a very bright sun, very bright sky in the background there. Um, another thing that I wanted to um, say well done to you actually, when you're bracketing, uh, you have to take those exposures as fast as possible. Given the sun was rising at the same time, you did well to not get a, a kind of line of sunshine in your composition. It really appears as like a spot. That, that, was a, that was great going on your part. Second, composition. Now, you've composed this really well. I like the way this huge well-known rock, the arch, um, the Mesa arch, is kind of guiding us into the composition with these rocks. Now I find, basically, I call this technique framing with a frame. Uh, here's your frame, and that's your second frame inside that frame, okay? Uh, very interesting. Although, given you were stuck with your composition because there were other photographers, why not in that case just zoom in and get a completely different shot, you know, something like this. Uh, right, I'm not going to respect the uh, the format here, but if you were to frame something like that, well, it goes a bit too panoramic that way, doesn't it? Something like that. So we've got the arch, and we've got the, uh, how do you say, the background image there. I'm trying to get a bit of this in the image also, and respect the rule of thirds in placing the sun here. Something like that could be quite interesting, although we'd be wondering what the hell those rocks are, so maybe a bit wider. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. So zooming into something like that, that looks pretty cool. I would have suggested trying that. Um, as I say every time, it's working the subject. You know, when you're on location, everything's ready, everything's fine, you're getting the images you want. Work your subject. You just keep trying and changing your focal length, changing your point of view, changing your subjects, and trying lots and lots of different um, uh, elements to shoot. That way, when you come home afterwards, you've got a whole bank of images from which to choose from, which is always more interesting. Um, otherwise, this image is pretty cool. Now, the HDR, I find it a tad too accentuated, just a little bit, you know, mainly on these rocks here. It looks painterly. I don't really like the painterly effect. That's personal. I mean, do what you want, you know, it's, it's, it's your photo, it's your creation. But um, personally, I don't really like um, strong HDRs. And this one is just a tiny bit tilting towards the strong part, uh, mainly on the rocks. But otherwise, for the sky, that was, well, you just needed that, you know, <laughs> that was compulsory. Um, otherwise, great image. I really like what you've done here. Well done on that. 
Thank you for sending your image in, Mike. Uh, all you other viewers, please don't hesitate to send your images in for a free critique. It's a nice way to learn, nice and easy. And it's through these different errors, through trial and error, basically, that you're going to learn photography and get better at it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Follow us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, we're at My Photography Show. And uh, go to our website, which is myphotographyshow.com. Send your images, it's all free. Have fun, and hope to see your images soon on myphotographyshow.com. This is Greg Robinson saying you have fun shooting.